So thank you for having me. OpenAI versus Azure OpenAI. So we're here at a conference, it's uh, not so much Azure, and I'm going to stand here for 10 minutes and talk about Azure, which is a little bit scary, because <laughs> I've worked with people that work with AWS and GCP before, and if I mention Azure, it's normally treated like a dirty word. Um, it's, it's all right, honestly. I use it every day, it's fine. It's getting better. They've all got their, their quirks. So who am I? I'm Anna. Um, I've been in the industry for 17 years, so I'm old. Um, I've been doing this a long time. I started off as a front-end developer, went into software engineering, um, and then specialized in data, um, did a lot of data engineering, um, and essentially ended up being a data engineering consultant for my current employer, Advancing Analytics. They poached me away to come and work for them. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP. Um, it's very similar to an AWS hero. I do a lot of community work, so I do a lot of public speaking. I deliver workshops. Um, I do code clubs for children, especially those with special needs, so those who are neurodiverse. So if there's anyone here who lives around Bristol and is interested, please let me know, because I'm always looking for volunteers. Um, and I co-organize events as well, so the Data Bristol event um, and other uh, virtual events as well. So the why, why are we interested in OpenAI versus Azure OpenAI? Because you could just use OpenAI, right? Why bother having to jump on the Azure bandwagon? It's a question I get asked a lot. Um, so as soon as Azure announced that they were going to be doing their own flavor, so to speak, um, everyone was like, yeah, well, why bother? Why should I care? Well. Firstly, we, myself and a colleague wrote a blog about this, um, and it is the most popular blog on our website. So there's a lot of people asking the same question. So when I'm asked to talk about Azure um, at a conference that isn't Azure-focused, um, it was the first thing that came to mind because of the popularity in that question that so many people keep asking. But Microsoft likes to buy cool stuff, right? And I can put this up here because I'm not at a Microsoft conference. But um, I don't necessarily agree with this meme, but I do find it very funny um, that they go and they see something really cool and like, yeah, we're going to buy it and we're going to own it now. It's going to be ours. Um, and I was working with um, AWS <laughs> developers when they bought GitHub, and I can't repeat the language that, that came out of their mouths, um, but they weren't impressed. Well, when it comes to Microsoft and OpenAI, it's actually a partnership. So it isn't that they are trying to take over OpenAI. They are literally um, partnering with them to actually produce something that is going to be um, useful to consumers, useful to clients. So I'm a consultant when I'm working with clients. It gives us um, an extra edge. So OpenAI, what is OpenAI, sorry? Um, it's, a le it's a leading research laboratory focused on developing safe and uh, beneficial AI. They produced some of the most advanced AI models to date, including uh, GPT-4, which can, which can understand and generate human-like language. So I'm assuming everyone here has heard of OpenAI, right? Yep. <laughs> so uh, basically, OpenAI's research focuses on a wide range of AI applications, from natural language processing and speech uh, to speech and beyond. So they aim at solving some of the most pressing challenges in AI development while also ensuring that these technologies are developed in a way that is safe and beneficial to everyone, and that is really key. So what have they produced? We've all heard of ChatGPT, GPT-4, GPT-3.5, Whisper, DALI, MuseNet, Jukebox. Um, so these slides, I will give a link at the end. Um, so uh, these will actually give you links to um, to actually be able to explore what these technologies are if you haven't used them yet. So again, what is Azure and OpenAI? It is a partnership. Um, it's not that uh, Microsoft are trying to take over. Um, they do partner with companies such as OpenAI, and um, they've also got a good partnership with, say, Databricks as well, where they work hand in hand to uh, create, basically, give you a, um, a, the, the best product you can have for that particular um, technology. So by joining forces, it brings the power of cloud compute and resource to the table, while OpenAI brings its impressive knowledge and skills in AI. With this partnership, they're tackling some serious tough challenges and creating some seriously smart solutions. Bit of a sales pitch. 
So, um, many of you here may have heard of ChatGPT Enterprise. Um, that is challenging Azure um, OpenAI because um, a lot of what OpenAI lacked, this is now actually offering, but it is very, very new. It's only been announced in the last few weeks. So this session is going to focus on um, essentially um, what's the difference between vanilla OpenAI and working with Azure OpenAI. But you've also got uh, ChatGPT Plus as well. So it gets a bit confusing. We're just going to focus on just if you were going to go from vanilla OpenAI to Azure. Right, um, I'm not going to do any demos because we've got 10 minutes, so I'm going to uh, basically cut through um, what some of these differences are between um, OpenAI and Azure OpenAI and why you'd actually choose between the two. So ownership. So it's co-developed by Microsoft and OpenAI. GPT-4 support. Um, supports the latest GPT-4 models in Azure. And it's a paid-for service with a monthly cost of a $20 subscription and ChatGPT+. Security. So this offers the security capabilities of a Microsoft Azure, and that is really key because um, you're getting off the shelf all of, that, all of that behind you from Microsoft, from Azure, so all of those expertise. Um, and when I've spoken to Microsoft um, about this, um, they've essentially said, yeah, this is great for if you know, you've got an enterprise solution and you want that support, say, in the middle of the night, um, because this is part of Microsoft, part of Azure, you've got that support there. And in vanilla OpenAI, not, um, not ChatGPT Enterprise, um, you don't necessarily get that support. So that essentially is quite a key one to take away. Image input support for GPT-4, it's not supported in Azure OpenAI. So that's now a score against Azure OpenAI. Um, it's designed to be multimodal, but it isn't, um, but not specified in OpenAI. So VNet and private endpoint support, so that's virtual networks, private endpoints in Azure um, in very layman's terms are just kind of like the handshake when you're setting up a secure uh, path between two different um, resources that say could be in different subnets. You can create private endpoints so that they can talk to each other. Supports VNets and private endpoints essentially in Azure OpenAI, so out of the box you've got all of that. But in OpenAI, it's not specified. It's not something um, that you're getting out of the box. So potentially, you're going to have to set all of that up yourself around it, um, which isn't so great when you've got clients saying, I want everything to be super, super secure. Access. So this is one against Azure again. Um, you need an Azure account. An Azure account is going to cost you money. Uh, so um, if you want to just start playing with OpenAI, you don't want to go on the Azure side first, because um, you don't want to spend money needlessly. So the access, essentially, on the OpenAI side is available to everyone. Let me check where I'm at with time. So learning resources, um, offered instruction to Azure OpenAI training courses, learning resources available. So there's lots of resources on both sides there. Support, you've got lots of support on both sides. Um, Fine-tuning model creation. It's not specified on the OpenAI side, but it is um, on the Azure OpenAI side. It allows the creation of up to 100. How long have I got? Or is it five minutes? Yeah, OK. So uh, training data for fine-tuning modeling. Training data provided is only used to fine-tune the customer's model and is not used to train or improve models. Uh, data provided on the OpenAI side uh, to API prior to prior no, first 2023 may have been used for improvements. So that's really key. So when I'm working with clients and you mention something like that, like, oh, no, no, they can't touch my data. Um, and as a data engineer, that is something that is part of my bread and butter. It's part of my day job, is making sure that we're compliant with GDPR, uh, that we're securing PAI. Uh, so um, when we're trying to encourage them to, to use these sorts of technologies, that is one of their key questions straight away. So prompts and completions for ChatGPT, stores prompts and completions data of maximum of 30 days. Um, and this is key again on the OpenAI side, stores prompts and completions to train or improve the models. Therefore, with this in mind, you should be careful when using sensitive data. Again, that subject around protecting your client's data, they're not going to like the idea that their data could be used by OpenAI. 
So SLAs for API responses, the overall SLA for the Azure OpenAI service is the same as for Azure Cognitive Services. So they're able to provide that information and say, you know, this is what, what you'll get with, for your SLAs. Um, but on the OpenAI side, it's not available, but they're working towards it. And then you have a status page. So you've got a little bit more reassurance there uh, with your SLAs on the Azure side. For the, so the price for ChatGPT um, is based on the pay-as-you-go consumption of 0.002 per 1K tokens. Um, so it could get a bit pricey, uh, whereas on the OpenAI side, it's free plan with some limitations with some paid plans. The price is 0.002 per 1K tokens again. So regional availability. So it's currently only available in West uh, Europe and East US and South Central US. Not great. Um, you you want to have a few more on that list, really, don't you? Um, provides API access to many country regions and territories. So OpenAI winning on that one. So we've kind of whipped through a list there. And again, I will give you a link to these um, slides so you can take a look yourself and see all the links. But if you look at the overview of what we just went through, Azure OpenAI is a service that offers advanced language AI uh, with OpenAI models while providing security and enterprise promise of Azure. So that's key. If you're uh, going to provide an enterprise solution um, and um, you want the bells and whistles there already and not have to build it out yourself, Azure will give you that. Now, ChatGTP Enterprise, very, very new again. Um, that also has the promise of doing the same, um, but it's very new, and myself and the colleague are actually going to build on this session, build on the blogs that we've written, and actually do a direct comparison to see how it actually compares. Um, so, again, this is co-developed by Microsoft and OpenAI, and it shows compatibility with smooth transition between the two. Again, a bit of a sales pitch. So Azure OpenAI supports VNet. So when we're talking about networking and uh, securing our systems down um, and making sure that um, you know, uh, we're, we're compliant and that we've got no risk of anyone being able to access our data, again, which is really key in my day job, you've got that straight away with Azure. Um, you've got that security. You've got Microsoft and Azure behind you. Um, you can set, set it up your VNet so you can um, actually have it within your existing VNet. And that's all there already for you. So OpenAI is a research organization focused on advanced artificial intelligence in a safe and beneficial ma manner. So they were talking about security on the Azure side. Very, um, it's a, a very, um, uh, <laughs> I can't think of words out. It's a, it's a, a very, uh, you know, conscious company um, who are uh, working towards safe and beneficial manner. So. Um, it's not that, um, that they're not um, compliant, it's just that you're getting the bells and whistles wrapped around Azure. Well, OpenAI did not initially offer security and enterprise promise of Azure, it now offers enterprise edition, which we've talked about at a cost though. So it's worth comparing the costs and whether even if you're just starting, whether you might want to start on the Azure side, especially if you're cross-cloud, which I was in a previous role, when you've got things like Terraform to be able to deploy and, and tear down things. So, um, at a cost, and it does provide comprehensive data privacy policies and lean learning resources. And again, myself um, and a colleague are going to build on this because of the popularity um, and actually build this into a bigger session uh, where we have demos and we actually talk more in depth about the differences. So whether the summary, whether you're an AI researcher, developer, or enthusiast, OpenAI is definitely an organization to keep an eye on. With a cutting edge research and commitment to responsibility of AI, they, they're helping shape the future um, of technology in exciting and meaningful ways. So for those who are beginning to explore um, cutting edge open AI models, just stick to open AI, right? But if you're going to go to more of an enterprise solution, it's worth looking at Azure, even if you're not an Azure person, because again, you can be cross cloud um, and it might actually offer what you need out of the box. So this is the GitHub repo um, that um, myself and a colleague have put together. Um, it's got the slides in there. It's got a link to our blog on, on our company website. Um, so you're welcome to take a look at that, um, ask me any questions. Um, and we are going to be building on this and actually expanding on those comparisons. Um, there isn't much out there at the moment for that enterprise versus Azure um, OpenAI. So that would be a really interesting one. 
Um, so we've got some links here. Um, if you grab the link, um, you can explore some of those resources that we recommend looking at um, that could kind of help you understand OpenAI and how the Azure OpenAI works. And again, the link is there. Okay. That was me. <laughs>